you that, you know, if it's cold here, there's some places that are warm. <laughs> and if you have some extra dollars in there, you could book your flight and go there. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're uh, so happy to see again back here, uh, Gabs and Abby and the kids. God is good. Hallelujah. And today, uh, early morning, uh, Pastor Amil asked me to uh, uh, cover him, deliver a sermon today because he has a very important family matter that need to their attention. But, uh, you know, as like uh, a good Boy Scout, they always say that you need to be ready when you're called. Amen. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to share to you in connection with our uh, sermon series that we do here about the kingdom of God that I entitled the Understanding the Mystery of the Kingdom of God and uh, if you have a Bible with you our text is in Matthew chapter 13 uh, verses 1 to 9 uh, Pastor Pierre, could you please uh, put it on the slides uh, my, I don't have my, stand, uh, my reading glasses here <laughs> Matthew chapter uh, 13, 1 to 9. Okay. Okay, so uh, don't you know that the Bible is so, the greatest uh, love story reading in the Bible that was ever told? It's the greatest story how God loves you and me so much. From Genesis to Revelation, it is a story, a love of story that was written in the Word of God, from the Word of God. And it is not only a love story, but it is also a mystery. The Bible has lots of mystery to uncover. And uh, in Matthew chapter 13, uh, verses uh, 1 to 9, we could read in there Okay, it was entitled the parable of the sower and in NIV version it says here the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood in the shore then told them many things in parables saying a farmer went out to sow, sow his seed as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grow up and grow up and choke up the plants. Still other seed fill on good soil where it produce a crop a hundred, sixty to thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to hear your word today. Open our hearts and open our minds so your words will grow in our hearts and we will Make us uh, ready to share your good news, your word to other people as well. We thank you so much for the Holy Spirit that is here with us. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the central idea of our study today is that as disciples of Jesus Christ, we must take part in sowing the seed. What's the, what does that mean? In sharing the word of God to the heart of every people, whether they listen or not. If they listen or not, it's not our business anymore. It's God's business. Our part is to sow the seed. To share the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, if you could, if you would notice in these verses from Matthew chapter 13, 
that Jesus is the master teacher. Jesus teaches so plainly, he uses the words, ordinary words, uses example that people clearly understand. In this passage, he told a story about sowing, the parable of the sower. But I want you to notice three things when Jesus is teaching. Number one, the method of his teaching, which is by way of parable. So what is parable? What does that mean? Parable is an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. It is an earthly story, but it has a heavenly meaning. Number two, but the question is, why does Jesus use, uses parables to teach? And second thing is, number two is that the mystery of his teaching. In verse 10, we will read in there two things. In uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 10, it says here, The disciple came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? So the disciples noticed that Jesus spoke in parables. He's speaking in parables. And Jesus' answer is, he replied, verse 11, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, the disciples, but not to them. What is he talking about? In verse 12, uh, before verse 13, there is a hostility in there that happened. See, the Pharisees are uh, questioning Jesus why he is healing sick people on Sabbath day. That's in verse 12. But that's why here, he teaches people in parables. So the principle is in, ver uh, in number two, that it says here, if you could go back this, uh, there please. The mystery of his teaching is to reveal his truth to people. But at the same time, to conceal it to people with unbelieving hearts. Especially during those times, the Pharisees. Now, view study economics and business, the, the principle here is, do you, did you hear uh, the saying that the poor gets poorer and the richer gets, uh, the rich gets richer? Yung mahirap lalo naghihirap, yung mayama lalong yung mayama. Same principle applies here. See? Those people that has unbelieving hearts, Jesus doesn't want them to understand. <coughs> because Jesus knows the hearts of the people. And number three, eh, the motive of his teaching, not only the method, not only the mystery, but the motive of his teaching is those who have, will have more in those uh, have nothing will become poor or poor in knowledge and spirit and, uh, and in faith, things like that. See, here, Jesus, if you remember, he revealed his truth to ordinary people like you and me. You remember the tax collector, Zacchaeus, you remember apostles, they are ordinary people like you and me, they're fishermen. But he revealed his truth to them. I want to tell you that Jesus, he can reveal his truth to each and every one of us. It doesn't matter who you are. Could be a kid. Could be a father. Could be a mom. Could be an ordinary worker. Could be the owner of the business. Jesus will reveal his truth to you. The question is, are you ready? Is your heart ready? Now, the parable that we read, the parable of the sower, there's three things that I want you to notice in there. Number one is the seed. Number two is the soul. Number three is the soil. So what does that mean? So here, the seed in verse three is the word of God. Now it is the Bible. The Bible sometimes it's in your, it's here. 
the word of God it's in the the printed Bible which is now it's it becoming uh, uh, obsolete because everybody every person has a cell phone so the Bible now see Jesus compared the word of God to a seed. See, look at this. A seed. The seed, if you don't put it in the soil, it looks like nothing. It is dead. That's the seed. But if you put it in the soil, the seed has life. It germinates life. It will slowly from this one, it becomes that. And after a few days, it becomes that. After a week, it will be like that. It has a life. The Word of God has a life. But, you know, it doesn't matter if, if you are a farmer, and you understand uh, the concept of farming. It doesn't matter if you plow the ground, you irrigate the ground, you water it, you prepare it. As long as you will not put the seed in it, the seed doesn't matter in the ground is unuseful. So the seed is very important here. Now, here, Apostle Paul is talking about in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter 1, 23. Where feel it? It says in there. Okay, being born again, not of corruptible seed, talking about the word of God, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. See, here I want you to know this. Uh, here, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which is, I want you to notice the word, this is a King James Version, but this word, liveth and abide it. In some version, it says in there that the Word of God is alive and powerful. Alive, the word uh, that means zoo, Z-O-O, zoology, zoo, means a place where there's lots of living things, alive animals in there. Zoo, it's alive. The word of God is alive. And another word in there, the word uh, uh, powerful. Abiding. The word of God is powerful. It will change people's heart. There is power in the word of Jesus. There is power in the word of God. The seed germinates life. Hallelujah. Where Philip, please, uh, if you could uh, go back in there. Number two, see there, it's talking also, it is alive and active. And number two is the sword. Not only the seed, the sword. The sword is Jesus Christ himself. He called, it, he called himself, I am the son of man. He finally called, him, called himself, I am the son of man. But he is God in a man's uh, form. He is sowing with love's hands. See? He is sowing everywhere. He doesn't, you know, he's not too picky. He sows everywhere. We'll see later. And he is scattering the seeds. Now, number three is the soil. There, there, there's four types. If you notice, number one is the roadside or the wayside in verse 4. Number 2 is the rocky places. Number 3 is among the thorns. And number 4 is the good ground. What is he talking about? What is, does Jesus mean? He means the four kinds of heart. And he elaborate, explain everything on the following verses. Now, let's talk about the first one. That. The seed where there's no reception. 
in Matthew chapter 13 verse 19 when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it the evil one comes and snatches away that was so so what does that mean they hear the word but they didn't understand and according to some commentaries you know Satan is present in every gathering like this he is there. He's ready to snatch the word that was spoken. What does that mean? Some people hear, but their mind is not here. Oh, I'm going to McDonald's later. <laughs> oh, tomorrow I'm going. Oh, not again. Monday. Their mind is not here. They physically present, but they're not spiritually in. Amen. See, it's like they hear the message about the kingdom, not understand, because because their mind is not in. Sometimes. That's why I, I like the idea of the cell phone not being with you during our like that. Because you are like listening but you are on Instagram. That's why I like you, Pastor JR, for implementing that to our young people. The evil one comes and snatches away what was so in their heart. They are, some people, they are professional gospel rejecters. Those are the type of people that rejects the gospel. I don't need that. I know that already. I am good. I don't do bad things to other people. I live my life if in accordance with the law. I am a law-abiding citizen. I love other people. I don't do harm to them. I'm good. I don't need the word of God. Professional gospel rejected. That's what they say. The seed where there's no reception. During those days, if you will notice, this is the wayside. Sa ating panahon ay uh, uh, yung gilid ng kalsada. They call that. And during this time, those are just, uh, you know, it's a compacted soil like this. It's very, really hard. And you put the seed in there, it has no reception. It is hard. It's like a heart of people, be so hard. It was hardened by pride, hardened by sin, hardened by worries and everything like that. It is so hard that the Word of God cannot penetrate. Yeah. Second thing is, Number two is the seed with no root. See? Matthew chapter 13, 20 to 21. It was explained by Jesus himself. Someone receives the word and at once receives it with joy. They're so happy that they hear the word. They're excited. But here, here, look at this. But since they have no root, they last only for a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those are the heart of people that they, they receive the word with joy. They are emotional people. They're happy to receive the word. But you know, by the, by the time that they have troubles in their lives, they have encountered problems in their life, Jesus himself said, they quickly fall away. What does that mean? Okay, so they hear the word, they believe it. Wala ugat, mabawaw. And then, you give them problem. And then, they go to the church, and somebody offended them. Nagdito na. Di na makupunta dyan. They don't want to go to the church because somebody offended them. Too shallow. There's no root. 
They have a problem. I thought when you believe in Jesus, you become a Christian, your life will gonna be easy. Para para sa lang pala. No root. Third thing, the seed with no room. Reza me. If the seed was sown on a thorny place. See, see here. See, look at those little plants in there that was sown among the thorns. It has no room. Jesus himself said, someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, make it unfruitful. The worries of this life. You know, I hear people that say, you know, we're here in Canada, we don't have time for this type of, you know, Bible study and things like that. We're not, we didn't go to Canada for things like that. We're here to work, 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 fend our family. The worst. I like to go to Bible study, but I have a job. Our, we have a prayer meeting on turn, uh, Tuesday, but I need to work overtime. I have a double job. You know, the deceitfulness of wealth. There's a lot of people, wealthy people, wealthy people that during the time of the end of their life said that it was empty. Jesus himself said, deceitfulness of wealth. But the Bible says that God can bless you. In Corinthians, he said, Itagal, magagawa ng Diyos, pasaganain kayo sa lahat ng bagay. What does that mean? God can, will bless you. He can bless you with all kinds of things. Time, money, energy. Yan ang sabi ng Bible. Para may magamit tayo sa pagkatawang gawa. The, the intention is good. Not only for you to, you know, you are uh, just uh, uh, telling yourself and your family, but God can bless you to be a blessing to other people. When God bless you, share with other people. That's the principle. Moses, uh, Abraham become a blessing because God's intention to him that he will be a blessing to other people. Making it unfruitful. But, Jesus said this, the seed with no refusal. It get in. Get down. Someone who hears the word and understands. That's why we have the, I, I like the idea of after the sermon, every Sunday, that we have this 30 minute uh, sermon review. Because there's among us here, because during this preaching, you cannot raise your hand and ask questions. That's why Pastor Jerry and uh, pastors decided to have a sermon review. Because if you don't understand, don't keep it to yourself and go home without understanding. You have the chance to stay for the next 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes after sermon, to ask questions. Just like when we did it the first time, Pastor Anthony did the sermon, it was beautiful. Brother Jay was able to share some words, beautiful words. That's why I'm always telling you, take advantage of the time. Don't always like hear you like always you like after the the worship service you like you always want to go home and disappear. Build relationship. You build your relationship. You need time. Spend time. Love one another. Can you turn to the person beside you? Look at those faces. They are your brothers and sisters. 
spiritual brothers and sisters. Amen. We are brothers and sisters. We should love one another. We teach one another. Encourage one another. Amen. Hear the word and understand. <laughs> not only that, not only that they understand it, it produces crops. It produces fruit. See here? See, look at this. Okay. It produces crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. It multiplied. Nagbunga. May bunga. See, here four things I want to share with you. About a good soil, the seed with no refusal. Number one, the heart is open. It is receptive. Heart is open to the word of God. Second thing is, they bear fruit. Now my question to you is, is there fruit in your life? The Bible is clear. We could read in them the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It, what does he say in there in Galatians? See? The Spirit of... But the fruit of the Spirit, number one, is love. Do you love your brothers and sisters? Do you love your wife? Do you love your kids? Love. It's a very powerful thing. Love, it's an action word. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. So, love equals giving. Love equals giving your time. Love equals giving your resources. I really like the, the, uh, one of the traits of uh, our Filipino people. That even if, you know, somebody go to you asking for something, you know, say for example, borrowing money or something like, things like that, even if you don't have the money, that you're going to find a way because you want to give something because you love them. Love. Number two, says in here, joy. Is your heart, is your face always like grumpy? Like there's no joy, you're always complaining, you know, it's cold. When it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> always complaining about it's traffic. Oh, there's no joy. We should be those people that, you know, we project happiness in joy. Joy is not an absence of problem. It is knowing that God is with you, that everything is under control, even if you have a problem. That's why you can always smile. Amen. There are people, those people that will see you, they will notice that there's something in you. I like you. You always smile. Whatever it is that in you, I want that. I like that. You are viral. You smile a lot. But sometimes those smile like, you know, they're going to bring you in there. <laughs> yes, there's, there, your, your life is different. Peace. Self-control. Self-control in everything. See, I have a lesson with that. Ako yung taong laging galit sa kanin. Galit sa kanin. Tignan mo ngayon. Matasang sugar. 
Because it's a kind of self-control. Self-control in everything. It bears fruit, yielding 100, 60, 30. And number three, there's not only that you have an open heart, that you have fruits in your life, that your life is changed. There's a change in your life. That when you hear the word of God and it was sown in your heart, a good heart, a good soil, that there's change in your heart. Before, if you are the people always negative, now you're getting into the positive side of things. Because those you though you're the people that always, you know, complain, grumpy and everything like that. Now you have that positive image, future hope in your life. There's change in your life. You know, I always say the, the Bible doesn't uh, uh, say, or say that uh, smoking is bad. That smoking is that you're not allowed to smoke. That the Bible is saying that your body is a temple of God. That you need to take care of your temple. The temple of God. Your body. That's why it says in there. You look at the package, you will see the long-term effect of that. It's not only smoking. It's, you know, too much using gadgets and, you know, your sleeping pattern is affected. Two o'clock in early in the morning, you, all, you still like. <laughs> Seriously. Too much drinking coffee. Too much eating rice. Too much of everything is bad. There's genes. See, you, you could, uh, you could uh, uh, consume 10 cups of coffee a day. Maybe there's genes. Maybe 8 or 6 or 4. There's genes. People will notice the genes in your life when you hear the word of the Lord. There must be change. Not for your glory, but for the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The people will see, we will notice that there's change in our lives as Christians, believing Christians, that they will believe truly in Jesus. Because you know, a lot of people, they don't read the gospel. They don't read the Bible. But they see you as an example of the word of God. Not only that they bear fruit, not only that they have, they, there's changes. Last thing is, is this. There's joy in sharing the gospel. See, when you receive something, like the gospel, the word of the Lord, the great news of salvation, that you cannot contain it in yourself, that you want to share with other people, that there's joy in sharing the good news, the word of the Lord, that if there's Bible study, that you are excited to go. It's not like, pray a meeting na naman, pari parehas lang, Bible's again, it's a, there's joy. That's why you need to check your heart. Are you the type of people that, you know, you don't have any uh, pleasure, if you may, in going to Bible study? Are you a type of people that you don't like spending your time going here for the prayer meeting? Check your heart. Maybe marami ng kalyo yan. Tigas na yan. Kalyo na yan. Check it. Check it. Pray and check. In conclusion, that there's nothing wrong with the seed, nor the soul. The problem is the soil. Break up your heart so the word of God could penetrate and bear good fruit in your life. Two verses I want to leave with you today as we close. Number one, brother Philip, please. 
Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3, talking about plowing your heart, cultivating your heart. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground and sow not among things. Break up your fallow grounds. Aragoin mo yan. Plow it. Cultivate. Cultivate your heart. Another verse I want to share with you. Last word. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hosea chapter 10, uh, verse 2. So the principle is, you know, the problem is not the seed. The problem is not the sower. The problem is the soul. And you know, God will take care of it. Our goal is to spread the word, to scatter the seed. Don't worry about if they listen or not. It's not our business anymore. It's God's business. He will open the heart of people. We are the one who were tasked to to uh, scatter the seed, to plant, and walk. And when it comes to the seed growing, there's it's not our control anymore. It is in God's hand. My question to you. Would you take part in sowing the seed? Not only Pastor Jerry. Not only Pastor Jerry, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Ramin. But would you take part in sharing the seed, the word of the Lord to people that you meet? Maybe you could start in your family, your circle of influence, or the people that you go every day at work or at school maybe for our students here. Would you accept the calling of the Lord in sharing His word to other people? Because at the end of the day, it's not about us having a good life. It's about influencing other people to have connection in relationship with the Lord. Because time will come, we're not, time will come that we will all die. We're not here anymore. That those people that you share the word to, the generation that you will impact because you share the word to them, to them. Imagine Lolo Nens, Sister Ann's father, sharing the word to Hans' father. Imagine now the fruit that we are reaping. Pastor Hans, our pastor in Christ Corridor, Edmonton. How about clap of to the Lord? Because Lulu means plant the seed to Uncle Art and Uncle Art plant the seed to his children. Now the fruit. You will never know the impact that you will make because you utter the word, you open your mouth because you utter the word of the Lord to other people. When you see people posting something on Facebook, it says, I'm depressed. What are you going to say? <laughs> share the word of the Lord. Amen. Your opportunity to share the word of the Lord. Don't just put lie in there. Are you, do you like that I'm depressed? Yeah. No, share the word of the Lord. We, are, we should think and act differently. We should act differently. Amen. We are Christians. We, are, we believe in Jesus Christ. We are saved people. We should act differently. We should think differently. Take every opportunity to share, to share the word of the Lord to other people. Because you will never know. You will never know if that's going to be the next Pastor Jerry. 
Pastor J, you will never know. The only thing that we will know is that if you share the word of the Lord, God will do the rest. Yeah, I like that saying, just do your best. God will do the rest. I don't, you know, I don't really know the Bible, but you know some verses, few verses, maybe you have a favorite verse. All right, if I could ask you, do you have a favorite verse in the Bible? Okay, so, could you share, please? Maybe. Okay, come on, we're listening. It's only 5.30, 6.30. Come on. Okay, maybe later. And, do you have a favorite verse in the Bible? Okay, come on. Wow, how about a clap of him to the Lord? I can, I can do all things for Christ who gave me strength. So, what, what are you going to do with that word? You know, you're at school. Your classmates are so worried about the exam. Share the word of the Lord. I can do all things for Christ who gives me strength. But at the same time, you need to review and study your notes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a wish. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, sharing the word of the Lord, it could, it should not be boring. Because it is a good news. It is a good news that when you share the word of the Lord, you should, you should be excited, you should be happy. It is a good news. You know, you don't need to memorize the whole Bible doctrines and principles and everything. Just share what you know. And God will do the rest. And if you find it that it's hard for you to believe, pray to the Lord to plow your heart. That He will open your heart. That the word of the Lord will bear fruit in your heart. That there's going to be chains in your heart. That there's going to be joy in sharing the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's lots of means and mediums and every opportunity now to share. The word of the Lord. Don't keep it to yourself. It is too good to be kept. It is too good to be kept. Hallelujah. How about this old stand? And uh, let's all pray. Lord, we want to thank you for your word today. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here with us. Thank, thank you for the knowledge and wisdom that you give it to each and every, every one of us. Thank you for your word written in the Bible. That we are ready to open it every day. Lord, bless our heart and open our heart to your words. That it will return with so much fruit in our lives. That it will give, make change in our lives. That we will have joy in sharing your words to other people. Bless your church, this church here. Bless Pastor Jerry and his family, Pastor Jerry and his family, Pastor Anthony. Bless Pastor Ramil, Ate Lauren, and Casey and Kenisha. We want to pray to you all families represented tonight that you will use us, each of us, individually, in our family. That it will be uh, an avenue of good news to other people and blessings to other people. We thank you for the opportunity to hear and listen to your words. And we thank you, Jesus, for your love to each and of us. Until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Ramil, for wonderful message.